welcome to this video revise all all bacteria before exams okay i am making this video so that it will be useful for the students to just go through before two to th three days of their exam so that uh, you can recall it better during your exams okay because bacteria is a huge topic to revise it before exam it's it is a difficult task to complete okay so i'm trying my best so that you can revise it before exam and you can score good okay so let's get started first of all this is the uh, gram positive lab algorithm okay so bacteria is gram positive now gram positive bacilli cocci and branching filaments so first we will talk about bacilli now if uh, uh, you you prepare the slide okay gram positive slide and it comes out to be bacilli now you need to differentiate whether uh, it is aerobic or anaerobic if it is aerobic then it will be listeria corynebacterium and bacillus okay and if it is negative then it is clostridium okay then if comes out to be gram positive branching filaments on this slide then again you need to decide whether it is aerobic if it is aerobic then it is no cardia okay if it is negative then actinomyces so in this way uh, lab technicians and microbiologists decide okay they go through this algorithm and they decide which microbacteria is this so if you remember this chart it will be easy for you okay to find out uh, which bacteria is asked in the question okay so i recommend you to read this chart three to four times so you will easily memorize this okay so now we will talk about cocci it's a huge topic here in this chart okay so all anaerobic and facultative you need to take it both okay now if it is gram positive cocci next what you will do is catalyst test if catalyst test comes out to be positive then it is staphylococci group now do coagulase test if coagulase test is positive so staphylococcus aureus if it is negative then do neobiosin test if this is positive then saprophyticus and if negative then uh, epidermidis okay so this way you can rule out this staphylococci group now if catalyst test negative then streptococci so then next test is hemolysis okay you need to see uh, the petri dish uh, in which we have cultured the bacteria if it is alpha hemolysis then you need to do optogen and bile solubility test if it is positive then st uh, it is pneumonia streptococci pneumonia and if it is negative then it is viridians viridians are caps non capsulated and uh, pneumonia is capsulated okay if it is beta hemolysis on the petri dish then basitrin uh, basitracin test will be done if it is positive then group a step streptococcus pyogenes okay if it is negative then group b streptococcus ag agalactasia okay this is mainly seen in newborn children it causes infection in newborns okay this can cause seizures so keep this in mind now gamma hemolysis then do 6.5% of NaCl test and if comes out to be positive then enterococcus negative then bovis so now uh, let's do one by one bacteria first we'll take staphylococcus odious So this is gram positive beta hemolytic catalyst positive try to recall the chart coagulase positive okay these are found in these are cocci and these are found in clusters okay group of grapes this will be arranged like this way in this slide okay so now what is the virulent factor protein a 
this is the important virulent factor which is found in them which is found in this uh, staphylococcus what this will do is whenever our body okay is attacked by a bacteria so imagine this is the bacteria now this is our dendritic cell this dendritic cell will recruit t cells this t cell will recruit b cells okay now what this b cell do is they form antibodies now this is the fc part of the antibodies now this fc part of the antibody okay so now this part will bound like this and this will be engulfed by our macrophages okay so now this uh, protein a which is found in the bacteria what this will do is this protein a will bind okay for example this is the bacteria to this antibody is bound right this bacteria will release this protein a now this protein a will bind to this part fc portion so now macrophages won't be able to engulf them okay so this is the role of protein a so it will inhibit phagocytosis okay now where this bacteria is found in our body nars but been snows okay axilla and growing fine so mostly infections will be found in this region so what are the infections caused by the skin infections folliculitis cellulitis okay then abscess well known for abscesses okay so whenever you see the abscess in surgery ward okay try to recall that yeah it is uh, staphylococcus causes it okay there are so many organism causes abscess but this is one of the one this is one of them then pneumonia for this endocarditis these are the most important infections please try to remember this these are being tested so many times okay septic arthritis we all know that ortho is equal to so ortho is all about staphylococcus aureus okay mostly bone infections are caused by staphylococcus aureus there are exceptions no doubt but yeah then morsa methicillin resistant it is it produces tst tsst1 which is known as this uh which is known as staphylo staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome okay what happens is tss t uh, t1 is a super antigen okay and this super antigen will bind to mhc2 and t cell receptor resulting in polyclonal t cell activation okay so this is t cell this is a t cell okay this is mhc uh, receptor okay this is mhc receptor so this uh, toxin will bind here okay and it will stimulate it so many times that so many t cells are recruited and this t cells Uh, which are recruited will release cytokines and will uh, lead to fever shock organ damage 
ओके एक्सेट्रा एंड इवन डेथ के नकाउ मोस्टली सीन विथ टेम्पोन्स यूजेस नाउ देन नाइन्थ डिसीज इज फूड पॉइजनिंग दिस विल फॉर्म एंट्रोटॉक्सिन ओके एंटेरोटॉक्सिन दैट विल बी प्री फॉर्म्ड इन द फूड एंड वेन दिस एंट्रोटॉक्सिन एंटर एंटर्स द बॉडी विद इन टू टू सिक्स आवर्स ओके दिस एक्स ऑन द ए एन एस एन एस पार्ट ऑफ द जी आई टी वॉमिटिंग then this bacteria makes coagulus enzyme it produces hyaluronidase and this will be helpful for pulse liquefaction next bacteria is staphylococcus epi termites okay so what is this this is gram positive okay this cattle is positive coagulase negative type try to recall the chart urea is positive this occurs in clusters okay and this are normal flora of skin okay this are also normal flora on the skin skin flora and mostly contaminates the blood cultures okay when the cultures are made in the labs these are contaminated by staphylococcus epidermidis this uh, is important to remember for the microbiologists and the technician because this will contaminate the petri dish so and uh, what is the main uh, disease which is related okay how it affects uh, the humans is when they mostly this stephalco epidermidis is mostly found uh, iv catheters okay on implants so this is mostly acquired in hospitals okay if proper sterilization is not maintained okay because this forms the biofilms then we have saprophyticus this is gram positive okay this is also cattle is positive but coagulase is negative right and no biosin resistant where this is found this is found in female genital urinary tract perineum so what this will cause is uti the next bacteria that we'll talk about is streptococcus pneumoniae 
okay so this is also gram positive but this is lens set shaped okay this is the shape of this bacterium this will be purple and this will be like this okay this is a diplococci encapsulated so keep this picture in mind okay what is the uh, pathology enzyme which is released is IgA protease so what is IgA IgA is the antibody right this is the antibody which protects our, the mu our mucosal surface for example this is the mucosal surface okay and IgA antibody will protect but what this does is it releases IgA proteases and this destroys this Ig antibodies. So now any bacteria can uh, enter the mucosal surface and will invade the tissues, right? So by producing Ig proteases, this diplococci will enter our tissues and will cause the disease. So what are the diseases caused by this bacteria? Meningitis. Okay. Otitis media. Pneumonia. Sinusitis. Okay. Uh, it forms rusty sputum when it causes pneumonia. And uh, this causes sepsis in sickle cell anemia patients fine now another bacteria is streptococcus viridians so these are also gram positive cocci these are alpha hemolytic okay and these are the dental flora okay so uh, <coughs> what happens is after dental surgery okay without antibiotic prophylaxis what happens is this bacteria will enter the bloodstream and this can cause subacute bacterial endocarditis and these are optogen resistant okay so what this streptococcus viridians do sab this is a very famous okay topic which is repeatedly asked in exam <coughs> so yeah now streptococcus pyogens these are also gram positive cocci which are arranged in chains okay so this will be arranged like this way these are basitracin sensitive, okay? Beta hemolytic P Y R positive. This is important to note. Now this produces antibodies against M protein. Okay. This M protein is protective in human body, but this forms antibodies <coughs> against this M protein. Then hyaluronic acid. It will it also produces hyaluronic acid which prevents phagocytosis. Okay, so let me explain you this for example <coughs> this is our cell in the background of the cell m antibodies is formed okay uh, m protein is released so this uh, uh, m protein will be taken up by the dendritic cell which will go to t cells okay and this will go to b cells now b cell will form antibodies so to kill the bacteria okay, because this m protein uh, like protein is also found on the bacterial cell wall 
now uh, because of this antibody this same antibody uh, will attack which is against m protein this will attack the heart cells okay because same m protein is found in human bodies as well as uh, same type of m protein antigen is found in the bacteria okay so now what happens is this can cause rheumatic fever okay so this is the pathology behind the rheumatic fever after streptococcal infection now this also produces hyaluronic acid so what happens is imagine this is this is the bacteria this will form hyaluronic acid around this so now this macrophages won't be able to engulf it okay so this will be protective so this will uh, thrive and will divide and uh, will cause damage to our body tissues now there is a anti streptococcal antigen okay against which antibodies are formed which titer we can use for uh, diagnosis of this particular infection then also there is a anti dns b uh, ant uh, antibody which can also be used for diagnosis this mainly used in rheumatic fever this mainly used in skin infections okay so mainly both these are used for diagnosis what are the infections cause impetigo your honey crusting will be seen okay this is very typical for streptococcal pathogen infection the cellulitis pharyngitis erysipelas then toxic shock syndrome because this will form tsst uh, toxic which we have also done in streptococcus aureus bacteria then necrotizing fasciitis rheumatic fever and glomerulonephritis okay the famous disease which is called scarlet fever <coughs> which also may makes kawasaki's disease wait a minute i will explain you this in detail the how to differentiate between scarlet fever and kawasaki but let's just talk about scarlet fever first uh this pyogens will produce erythrogenic toxin okay and this will result in tissue damage and will form rashes there is a particular type of rash that is blanching sand paper like body rash okay there will be strawberry tongue and circumoral pallor now how to differentiate both this here also you can see a uh, strawberry tongue there will be fever sore throat so same like that of scarlet fever okay there can be rashes here <coughs> okay here there will be joint pain and this is a kind of vasculitis okay so there will be features of vasculitis in children and this also predisposes to coronary artery disease okay so keep this in mind so now uh, streptococcus agalactasia this is gram positive cocci basic uh, resistance beta hemolytic this is vagina flora so what happens is in pregnant lady if uh, she is harboring this bacteria okay agalactasia during normal vagina delivery what happens is the uh, baby will acquire uh, this infection okay and uh, so during delivery newborn acquires the infection and there will be pneumonia sepsis and meningitis so they should be kept in mind in differentials okay while treating the newborn for this diseases this came positive hepatitis plus positive pyr negative so how to prevent this uh, disastrous disease by screening uh, uh, the pregnant lady 35 37 weeks okay by swabs rectal and vaginal swabs if this is comes out to be positive then penicillin prophylaxis has to be given okay otherwise the newborn will experience a galactasia infection and there will be sepsis pneumonia or meningitis okay now next is 
बोवाइस दिस इज ग्राम पॉजिटिव कोकाई दिस इज गट फ्लोरा ओके सो बोवाइस फॉर गट रिमेंबर दिस वे नाउ वॉट एपन्स इज इन कॉलन कैंसर ओके देर विल बी सो मेनी सो मच ऑफ डैमेज ऑफ द बाउल सो दिस बोवाइस विल एंटर द ब्लड एंड विल कॉज एंडोकाराइटिस एंड बैक्टेरिया ओके सो दे दे विल आस्क यू इन एग्जाम इज दे गिव यू सीनर देर इज अ एटी ईयर ओल्ड मैन रिसेंटली डायग्नोज विथ सो एंड सो डिसीज दैट दैट मीन्स कॉलन कैंसर कॉलन कैंसर नाउ एक्सपीरियंस फीवर एंड ऑर्गेन देर इज अ ऑर्गेन डैमेज ओके डब्ल्यू बी सी काउंट इज रेस्ड देर वे मे बी वाल्व्यूलर डिसऑर्डर ओके इन्फेक्टिव एंडोकार्डाइटिस लाइक फीचर्स और बैक्टेरिया में लाइक फीचर्स ओके सो यू शुड कीप दिस बैक्टीरिया इन माइंड सेप्टोकस बोवाइज नाउ एंट्रो कोकाई दिस आर दिस आर ऑल्सो ग्राम पॉजिटिव कोकाई ओके दिस आर कॉलन फ्लोर अगेन मोस्टली जी यू टी एंड जी आई टी ओके दिस इज रिलेटेड विद दिस सो वेन एवर दिस दे इज अ ब्रीच इन जी यू टी एंड जी आई टी दैट इज वेन एवर देर आर एनी इन्वेस्टिगेशन डन लाइक सिस्टोस्कोपी एंडोस्कोपी राइट कॉलोनोस्कोपी और आफ्टर सर्जरी दिस एंट्रो कोकाई फ्रॉम द गट और द जी यू टी एंटर द ब्लड एंड अगेन दिस विल कॉज एंडोकार्डाइटिस ओके सब एक बैक्टीरियल एंडोकार्डाइटिस दिस आर कैटल इज नेगेटिव पी वाई आर पॉजिटिव एंड ऑल्सो नाव डेज वॉट एपन्स इज दे इज अ इंक्रीज रेजिस्टेंस अगेन इज वेनकोमाइसिन ओके सो दिस आर वेनकोमाइसिन रेजिस्टेंट एंट्रो कोकाई एंड मोस्टली दिस इज फाउंड इन नोजो कॉमिल इन्फेक्शन सो वॉट एपन्स इज आफ्टर सर्जरी देर आर कस बैक्टेरियम ओके देर कस सेप्सिस and how hard uh, the doctors try to treat but the patient doesn't respond why this happens is because of this resistant bacteria okay nowadays resistant is increasing because of increased use of i should say haphazard use of antibiotics okay so yeah it occurs because of this and so sh- uh, this should be kept in mind while treating any patient mostly this type of patient will be in icu so while you are posted in icus you should also keep this things in your mind so this will help you as well as your patient okay now next is bacillus cereus this is also gram positive road okay this causes food poisoning okay so what happens here is while cooking rice the spores of this bacillus may survive okay and this will germinate into new bacteria and this will form the enterotoxin okay so this will result in nausea and vomiting and can also cause diarrheal type so there is a difference in this time frame of both the symptoms they give the history that uh, there is a patient okay who ate rice and pasta okay and one to five hours after they were nausea and vomiting and if it is 8 to 18 hours after the symptom production then the sim- the disease will be of diarrheal type okay and git pain so difference in time frame there will be difference in the symptoms this is Uh, also famously known as reheated rice syndrome this is must to remember because they will give you um, one liner that what is reheated rice syndrome which organism causes it and they will write the organism name 
okay so just keep this in mind and in this videos i will talk about the this rapid revision videos i will talk about most imp points okay i will not tell you all the points because everything is not required what is required i will tell you and you need to remember all those points and i'm sure you will be able to clear your exams okay uh, <coughs> if uh, uh, if it is mbbs exam then also uh, this videos will be useful or if it is neat pg exam okay or any other uh, competitive exams like fmg ini cgt okay <coughs> or upsc so yeah next is clostridium species okay the common about clostridium species is they are gram positive and their roots we all know they are spore forming and they are anaerobic and these are obligate anaerobes okay so they cannot survive in hmm, aerobic conditions so you uh, like when there is a patient with a gangrene okay they used to give oxygen inhalation oxygen to the patient so that the bacteria clostridium bacteria won't be able to thrive in the wound okay now let's get started with clostridia this clostridia species produces exotoxins First is Clostridium titani. This will cause tetanus. Okay. When our patient is open wound, there are chances of development of this tetanus. So it is recommended to give I am anti tetanus toxid. Okay. Toxid is given. so yeah this should be kept in the mind because this will be useful in clinical practice so how it produces the symptoms is this uh, clostridium tetanus produces tetanospasmic okay now this tetanospasmic from the wound will enter Okay, will travel in retrograde fashion uh, through the nerves, nerve roots, then nerves to the spinal cord, and it will reach the spinal cord. Okay, in the spinal cord, it will inhibit transo cells. Okay, it's a, a type of cell. For example, this is a nerve. Okay, this will come here, and this will act on this neurons. Now there is a, a again other kind of cell. This is a renso cell which will inhibit this. Okay, this is inhibitory neurons. So, <clears throat> this is inhibitory neurons to anterior uh, horn cells. So anterior horn cells will not be able to act, and there will be relaxation. So now this tetanospasmin will uh, inhibit this uh, renso cells. So renso cell will won't be able to inhibit this uh, uh, inhibitory neurons, and so this uh, anterior horn cells will be activated, and there will be uh, spasm in the cells. So how this tetanospasmin will prevent it? It will protease. It will destroy this SNAP protein, which will inhibit neurotransmitter release. Okay, which are the inhibitory neurotransmitter that is released? It's glycine and GABA. Okay, so this acts at both spinal cord level, spinal cord level as well as in the brain. So there will be whole spasm of the body, and <coughs> this will lead to spastic paralysis. First symptom will be trismus. That is log jaw, right? Rhesus, sardonicus, 
opisthotonus so how to prevent this by giving vaccine tetanus toxoid vaccine now if the patient develops this then how to treat it you need to give antitoxin you need to give antibiotics okay diazepam and mount debridement Okay, so tetanus T for tetanic paralysis. Okay, so again, let me explain you the pathology because this is very important. They are asking you in exams. So there will be, uh, for example, this is the wound. From this wound, now in this wound, this bacteria enters. Bacteria releases the tetanus plasmin toxin. This will uh, go. towards in retrograde fashion to the spinal cord and to the brain through the no, uh, nose okay from the periphery to the central level now in the uh, central level they will inhibit this renzo cells okay so this renzo cells the which are inhibitory to anterior horn cells okay this will be inhibited so what happens is glycine and gaba won't be released okay so there will be activation of anterior horn cells so there will be spastic paralysis okay what how they uh, inhibit the neurotransmitter release from these renzo cells by destroying snare proteins okay this what is uh, what are the snare proteins for example this is the now root when the was cycle is released releasing this uh, neurotransmitter they require this snare protein so that this was cycles okay bind to this uh, cell membrane and fuse with this uh, uh, membrane of the nerve root and they can release this neurotransmitter so this snare protein will be inhibited so this neurotransmitter won't be able to bind to the nerve membrane and won't be able to release the neurotransmitter now clostridium botulinum so what this does is this produces heat labile toxin okay so this also produces the toxin now this toxin is heat labile that means it this it get destroyed in uh, heating uh, conditions if you boil the material containing uh, clostridium botulinum then it can be destroyed so what this does is this toxin inhibit acetylcholine release okay at neurotransmitter junction so if acetylcholine won't be able to release if acetylcholine is not released then muscle contraction will not occur okay so what will happen placid paralysis okay so what are the symptoms how you can remember this by 4d diplopia this atria this pgia and dyspnea there is a famous uh, uh, floppy baby syndrome okay there was a practice in olden times even today at some places this is being practiced that honey is given to the newborn child now this honey uh which is contaminated with the spores okay of botulinum will enter the newborn's newborn body and it will uh, germinate into the bacteria and this will release this toxin okay and this will lead to floppy baby now this toxin is very much useful as a drug okay for treating local conditions like if there is a dystonia what happens is dystonia there is a uh, constant uh, <coughs> uh, like constantly excited muscle okay there is a constant excited muscle so to inhibit this muscle 
pick uh, uses this then we can also use in Achilles here what happens in Achilles this is a uh, esophagus the lower part of the esophagus is spasmed okay so to get, uh, release the muscle spasm here we use uh, this botulinum toxin and for cosmetics like for wrinkling facial wrinkles this is used by dermatologists so yeah next is clostridium perfringens this produces alpha toxin okay and this F, uh, alpha toxin is myonecrosis and this results in gas gangrene this can also lead to food poisoning if the food is contaminated with the spores of this particular bacteria okay then we have clostridium difficile this produces pseudomembranous colitis they will give you a typical history that the patient is, was on a broad spectrum antibiotic or he was admitted in ICU or the ward a hospital admission and he was given antibiotics for many days and now develops diarrhea and after this colonoscopy was done and it was found out that there were pseudo membrane formed in the col colon and so they will ask you how you how you will treat the patient you need to give encomycin this is a talk of choice so this is a typical uh, case history will be given okay which i have told you uh, this will be the case history they will give you and they will ask you the treatment okay so you first you need to identify what which bacteria uh, they are asking about and then you need to uh, write the treatment <coughs> then corine bacterium diphtheria there are also gram positive roads okay and uh, they were chinese letter pattern arrangement Okay, in glass slides when they are when the smear is uh, formed and seen in a microscope then this type of pattern is seen they produces toxin which is exotoxin this exotoxin is encoded by beta phage you need to remember this and this causes ADP ribola Ribosylation of elongation factor 2 and inhibits protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is inhibited and causes cell destruction. Okay, so this is mostly uh, what is the shape? Is this it is a club like shape and there is a granules inside which are phosphate granules, phosphate granules which are used for. ATP generation okay now how this uh, infection is acquired this infection is acquired through the respiratory route okay and uh, what is the culture media tellurite agar here they they will form black colonies so what this will cause pharyngitis membranous pharyngitis white color membrane will be formed in the throat grayish white membrane okay plus there will be lymphadenopathy it can also cause myocarditis and arrhythmias so 
so how will you diagnose this when you do gram staining what you will see is gram positive roads arranged in chinese letter pattern with metachromatic granules okay, which i have told you phosphate granules then you need to do alic test for toxin so in this way you confirm the diagnosis this will be positive how to prevent there is a toxoid against this diphtheria which is given to children okay dpt vaccine next is listeria monocytogens this is also gram positive road okay how this is acquired by dairy products by eating dairy products which are unpasteurized okay unpasteurized dairy products or cold meat under cooked meats okay and uh, this is also this can also travel transplacental transplacental uh, travel is there okay so what happens is it can result into stillbirth stillbirth abortion in pregnant lady so this should be kept in mind this grows well in refrigeration temperature okay like 4 to 10 degree celsius so to grow this cold enrichment is used it is a special type of motility that is tumbling motility so what are the infections caused it can cause amnionitis septicemia spontaneous abortion meningitis mostly in immuno compromised and new bones and gat infection gastroenteritis how will you treat mpc okay so how we uh, how they will ask you this is that uh, there is a pregnant uh, lady who had cheese which was stored in the fridge refrigerator and uh, then she developed gastroenteritis okay then gradually she developed fever and ultimately resulted into spontaneous abortion so they will give you the uh, history like this and they will ask you to identify the organism so how to identify from this refrigerator okay so cold environment then there was a pregnant lady immuno compromised one so pregnancy is a immuno compromised state and uh, she do gastroenteritis then she develop fever which can be because of amnionitis and then spontaneous abortion the, so this all points towards this listeria infection so now we'll talk about filamentous bacteria gram positive filamentous we have no cardia and actinomycin this both are filamentous gram positive branching uh, looking like fungi but actually they are not fungi okay this is aerob 
this is an error try to remember the chart this is acid first this is not acid first okay this is mainly found in the soil so mostly infection acquired when there is a breach in the continuity of the uh, skin and uh, contaminated with the soil where this is found this is found inside the body okay in oral cavity GUT GIT okay so what happens in for example if we take GUT example when copper T is inserted into the uterus copper T okay then if this copper T irritates the uh, mucosa okay or we can say endometrium then we know that there is a actinomyces which is the normal flora then it will affect this uterus and it can cause endometriosis okay because it is already present in the uterus it's a normal flora right in GUT, GIT and oral cavity and whenever there is a breach or there is immunocompromisation then it can result in two invasion of the normal tissue and it will affect the tissues and will cause ultimately lead to the inflammation then this causes pulmonary infection okay pulmonary infection this is mostly TB like infection uh, and mostly occurs in immunocompromised this causes oral or facial abscess because it is found in oral cavity right this can cause PID with IUD implantation just now I explained you ok here sulfur granules will be seen how, how you will treat this try go try moxazole here you will give penny ok how you, how you can remember this is by remembering this step ok no cardia sulfonamides and actinomyces penicillin so now we will talk about gram negative organisms in this we have diplococci tocobacilli coma shaped uh, bacteria and we have bacilli right so first let's talk about talk about diplococci if gram negative uh, is found on the smear and if it turns out to be diplococci diplococci means this way okay and uh, uh, they are in pink color let me draw in it pink color okay if this is found then you need to first do uh, whether uh, see whether it is aerobic or anaerobic if it is aerobic then do maltes, maltose test if it is maltose positive okay then <coughs> if it is maltose positive then it is Neisseria meningitis okay and if it is negative maltose negative then it is Neisseria gonorrhea okay then if it is cocobacilli okay what are the gram negative cocobacilli are following H influenza Bordetella pertussis and Francisella tularensis okay if it comes out to be coma shaped gram negative organism do oxidase test if now you need to do for the three tests to differentiate them first if it grows at 42 degrees celsius temperature then it is clostridium jejuni if it is if it grows in alkaline medium vibrio cholera okay and if uh, it is urease produ uh, producing organism then it's h pylori then if it comes out simple bacilli okay then do lactose uh, fermentation if lactose fermentation comes out to be positive then see whether it is fast or slow if it is fast then it can be e coli klebsiella and enterobacter <coughs> if it uh, if it is a slow lactose fermenter then it can be two citrobacter or serratia okay if it is non lactose fermenter then you need to do oxidase test if it comes out to be positive then it is pseudomonas right 
If it is negative, then further you need to do H2S production on TSI aga. If it comes out to be positive, the salmonella and protease. If this comes out to be negative, then it's Shigella and Arsenia. So this way, uh, microbiologists and lab technicians uh, follow this chart, okay, to come out to the differential diagnosis. And after doing this culture, the organism from the specimen uh, which we have sent, okay, which the physician have sent, they will do the culture for the test according to this chart and they will uh, come out to the diagnosis okay if i'm just giving you example so uh, try to understand if uh, for example a swab has come okay uh, a swab just take it as a it's uh, came to the lab what the microbiologist will do is they will grow in the culture media okay after growing in the culture media they will form gram stain they will see what the gram stain shows okay if gram stain shows diplococci then we have two diplococci right you can see from here nizeria gonorrhea and meningitis so now they will see whether uh, it is requiring oxygen or not yeah it is requiring oxygen so they will do maltose test if maltose test comes out positive then it is nizeria meningitis okay so patient is having meningitis So this way, uh, the uh, microbiologists come to diagnosis. So if you know this chart, then it will be easy for you to crack questions during exam, and also this will be useful uh, when you practice medicine. Okay, so this chart is very much IMP. So try to read it thrice or four times. Okay, you will remember this with time. And try to solve questions on this chart okay so this will also help you to recall this stuff so now let's talk about individual microorganisms first we will talk about nizeria so in nizeria we have two organisms right nizeria gonococci and nizeria meningitis First general uh, characteristics, it is gram positive diplococci. Okay. They metabolize glucose and they produce IgA protease. I told you before the function of IgA protease, what this will do is it will destroy the antibodies, okay? IgA antibodies which is protecting our mucosa. So there will be a <clears throat> breach in the mucosal immunity so what will happen now this bacteria can easily enter the epithelium epithelial lining and this will destroy the tissues okay and this way they cause an infection so this is important to remember then they have lipo oligosaccharide okay and this is having endotoxin property So, how to remember the differentiating picture between meningococci and gonococci as meningococci, right, and gonococci. M, G, so maltose utilization, glucose utilization. Now in glucose there is only G, so it only utilizes the glucose. So this is a simple way to remember. Okay, now let's differentiate between gonococci so that all the points will be covered and you will remember it better. Let's differentiate this both. So there is no polysaccharide capsule here okay but this have a capsule then maltose this doesn't gonococci doesn't utilize maltose but meningococci utilizes it okay 
now there is no vaccine for this but we have vaccine for meningococci this is sexually transmitted or perinatally also okay from uh, mother to child this is transmitted via oral and respiratory secretions what gonococci will do is urethritis septic arthritis okay neonatal conjunctivitis then pid pelvic inflammatory disorder and fitz hug curtis syndrome what happens in this is there is a strain formation around the liver okay because there is a peritoneal inflammation because of uh, pid which is caused by uh, this gonorrhea so what are the dis uh, so what are the disease which is caused by meningococci it will cause petechiae it can cause meningitis water house friedrich sun syndrome right which causes dic adrenal insufficiency and even death okay so how we can prevent gonorrhea infection by barrier methods Okay, to decrease sexual transmission here you can give rifampicin ciprofloxacin and ceftrioxone as a prophylaxis after exposure to meningitis patient how will you treat ceftrioxone here ceftrioxone or we can give penicillin okay g so again gonococci gonococci doesn't have capsule it is maltose negative there are no vaccine for it it is sexually transmitted disorder it can also be transmitted perinatally it produces urethritis septic arthritis neonatal conjunctivitis pid fitzjug or uh, fitzhug curti syndrome okay uh, to prevent uh, uh, it is transmission okay which is mainly from sexual route uh, barrier methods uh, are recommended and treatment uh, is ceftriaxone now meningitis it is a capsule it is maltose positive it has a vaccine it is orally and respiratory transmitted it it produces petechiae meningitis what are our fredrickson syndrome which cause uh, in which there is a dic adrenal insufficiency and even death can occur so it is a very fatal disease so how to prevent it okay prophylaxis if a uh, if a normal person okay comes in contact with this meningitis patient so how to prevent it rifampicin ciprofloxacin and ceftriaxone or to treat is by ceftriaxone or we can give penicillin g okay so now we will talk about e coli so e coli is gram negative rod okay and uh, it is a fimbria which causes cystitis and pyelonephritis okay this produces lps toxin that leads to 
septic shock okay so what is the uh, concept behind this fimbria is e coli is found in our gut okay so from the anal region this is the anal region the bacteria will bind to this pili which is present along the epithelium of the skin perineal skin okay so with the help of this p uh, pili okay which can be seen here which is the fimbria will bind to this receptors on the skin then uh, it can uh, enter through the urethra and it will enter the bladder from the bladder ureter and to the kidney with the help of this fimbria okay so this is the concept behind this and in this way e coli enters uh, from the anal region to urethra region so it is important to maintain the hygiene of perineum okay so this is mostly seen in patients or in the area okay where there is a unhygienic practice now there are different types of e coli strain first we will talk about uh, entero invasive e coli what this does is this microbe invades the intestinal mucosa and causes necrosis and infl inflammation and this will cause a dysentery okay so what happens is imagine this is our cell okay this is the intestinal cell this is the villi this bacteria this bacteria can invade here so it will enter the cell okay and this will cause immune response and this leads to inflammation and destruction of the cell and so shedding of the cells okay bleeding patient will have fever patient will have uh, abdominal pain okay so this, this is enter invasive e coli now enter toxinogenic e coli what this does is it produces the enterotoxin okay this enterotoxin will not invade okay and there will be no inflammation but there will be watery diarrhea so what this does is imagine this is our intestinal cell okay now and uh, this bacteria enterotoxinogenic strain bacteria has entered okay this will release this enterotoxin okay so enterotoxin is released now what this enterotoxin will do it will enter the cell it will uh, stimulate gs receptor which will cause activation of cyclic amp and this will uh, open the chloride channels okay so this chloride channel will open and chloride will leak out so now this region will be hyperosmolar uh, osmolar region so it will also absorb water and in this way watery diarrhea will be seen now enteropathogenic e coli what this does is imagine this is our cell okay and this is our villi so what this bacteria does is they come and just bind to this villi and destroys this villi so what happens to this cell is this gets converted into this type of cell so now absorption will decrease and this will call lead to malabsorption and diarrhea okay now entero hemorrhagic e coli so what this will do is they will produce a toxin which will affect the endothelial lining okay so this will lead to bloody diarrhea now this will enter the blood vessel and wherever there is endothelium this will be endothelium will be destroyed by this bacteria so this uh, uh, bacteria will uh, enter the kidney kidney is capillary and will destroy the endothelial cells there okay endothelial cells there so because of destruction of the endothelial cells okay it, the surface will become rough now to uh, fill the defects here there will be platelet clot so platelet will come and there will be narrowing of the arteries and when the blood cells pass through this okay there will be breakdown of the cells and this leads to hemolytic uremic syndrome 
okay so there will be hus so in um cystios peripheral smear you will find cystiocytes and uh, because of platelet consumption platelet count will decrease okay and uh, renal blood flow will also decrease because there will be thrombosis here right and this will affect the renal function test okay so you should keep this in mind okay they will in exam they will give the history that a patient has eaten some meat okay now the patient has developed diarrhea and dysentery first there will be diarrhea then dysentery okay then after that after some time the patient uh, passed a uh, red color urine okay uh, renal function test was affected and peripheral smear cystiocytes were found cystiocytes were found so what is the uh, pathology which is it occurs because of this toxin which is formed O157 is to H7 toxin okay this toxin is lead to outbreak uh, in foreign countries okay many years ago uh, and there was a epidemic like situation there after eating the hamburgers Now next is Klebsiella. So it is also gram negative. It is normally found in our intestine. Okay, this forms mucoid colonies. So this is intestinal. Okay. So first, let me explain you the disease which is caused pneumonia, abscess. Pneumonia, which is caused by this, so forms red current jelly sputum, and this causes nosocomial infection (UTIs). Okay. What happens is on alcoholic or unconscious patient there is there is aspiration of the gi substance okay and this is aspirated into the lungs and we all know that normally klebsiella is the normal flora so this will uh, infect the lungs and will lead to uh, the pneumonia and can also cause lung abscesses okay now clostridium jejuni this is gram negative road coma shaped polar flagella okay the shape is like this coma shaped and there is a polar flagella okay the shape is like this it is oxidase positive and the main property is for it can grow at 42 degree celsius temperature okay it is uh, transmitted through fecoral route and causes bloody diarrhea this can also lead to gbs gulian bear syndrome and reactive arthritis so how they will ask you in exam is um uh, there was a 20 year old person okay who after who ate something okay from the from outside and now develops bloody diarrhea on gram staining it was found gram negative cowd bacilli and that was grown at 42 degree celsius temperature what is the likely diagnosis okay or they can also ask you like with this that he developed bloody diarrhea then it was resolved and after some time he developed flaccid paralysis okay which was diagnosed as gulian bear syndrome so what is the organism again clostridium jejuni they can also give you same way reactive arthritis example now next is pseudomonas pseudomonas is also aerobic motile gram negative rod non lactose fermenter oxidase positive and forms mucoid colonies it produces pyrocyanin pigment which you just uh, blue green pigment okay so most of the uh, diseases which is caused by this uh, pseudomonas will form this type of discharge okay blue green discharge so it points towards the diagnosis virulence factors are exotoxin a endotoxin phospholipase c and pyrocyanin this is caused uh, is pneumonia sepsis ichthyma gangrenosum UTI, diabetes mellitus, and in, in drug use, patients 
okay this is uh, the infection is easily caused in this patient okay diabetes and drug users zero infection so this mostly affects the immu immunocompromised people osteomyelitis in puncture wounds or it is external which is also known as swimmers here nosocomial infection skin infection hot or folliculitis this is fam famous question which is asked they will ask you that uh, a patient uh, after uh, coming from some uh, water park okay and they will give you the history that uh, he had uh, the swimming at that place and now he develops so this folliculite is all over the body so this will be hot tub folliculite then it can also cause corneal ulcers which are also blue green pigment producing now legionella pneumophilia this is also gram negative it is stained by silver staining because gram stain or gram staining it takes up stain poorly okay and this is grown in this special media which is charcoal charcoal yeast extract medium iron and cysteine so it's iron and cysteine now the detection diagnosis is made from the urine by antigen detection this causes legionnaire's disease okay which is severe pneumonia fever gi symptoms cna symptoms and mostly occurs in smokers and chronic lung disease so uh, imagine that patient is immunocompromised or had some kind of insult to the lung like patient smoker or chronic lung disease okay and when exposed to aerosols okay this uh, bacteria mostly lives in water habitat area so when exposed to the aerosols this is acquired to the patient and uh, uh, it can also cause pontic fever which is mild flu like symptom okay there's a story interesting story behind this legionella pneumonia uh, discovery what what happened that uh, there was a meeting in the auditorium and uh, in olden times there were coolers okay there used to be coolers there were no uh, there were no air conditioners okay so air will not be filtered out so in coolers coolers were on and the people had a meeting and after that Uh, within one or two days the people who attend that meeting okay developed pneumonia and it was very severe that many people died okay and uh, then after uh, uh, epidemiologist after that epidemiologist found out that uh, the source was those coolers uh, and uh, it was this legion and pneumophilia bacteria which caused all this uh, chaos okay Now Vibrio cholera. This is gram-negative, flagellated, coma-shaped, oxidase-positive alkaline medium. Produces produces rice water diarrhea. What happens is, imagine, this is our intestinal cells. Okay, this bacteria will activate this GS receptor. This will form cyclic AMP. This will open the chloride channel. So chloride channel will open, and chloride will leak out. Hyperosmolarity outside. the cell this will also attract water this will cause rise water too and this are acid level okay so um, mostly acquired in a patient uh, or hydric or uh, hypochlorhydric okay if uh, hcl secretion is not good in those patients and the food is heavily contaminated then no check can occur so fecal root is a transmission of root Raw, raw uh, shellfish. Okay, uh, if patient, or if a person eats raw shellfish, then he may acquire this vibrio-cholera infection. Treatment is mostly ORS. Okay, mycoplasma pneumonia. This has no cell wall, no gram stain. as it doesn't have cell wall it won't stain by gram stain okay pleomorphic in shape it has a steroids which provides a stability okay now this forms a typical walking pneumonia so what happens here is x ray is worse okay but the patient's condition is good he will walk uh, into the opd as if uh, uh, he is 
not like he is not suffering from very severe disease but when you see the x-ray of that patient then it will be whole uh, both of the lungs will only affected and there will be interstitial pneumonia like picture okay it will uh, be it will form igm antibodies it is grown in eton agar and treatment is macrolide this mostly cause outbreaks in jails and camps now chlamydia this is a obligate intercellular organism lacks classical peptidoglycan cannot mix its own atp it is a two bodies elementary body and reticulate body this for example this is the elementary bodies now this elementary body will enter the cell okay so this is the infectious body this will enter the cell and this will divide by binary fusion and form so many bodies here and ultimately this will burst out and will again forms elementary body okay and the cycle goes on this way it infects the cells and causes the pathology okay it produces endotoxin lps endotoxin this chlamydia tachometrosis this causes chlamydia tachometrosis and uh, pneumonia treatment is macrolides or doxycycline diagnosis is mainly made by pcr okay so there are sub types abc causes conjunctivitis d2k causes pd pelvic inflammatory disease which is the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease conjunctivitis l1 l2 l3 lymphogranuloma venereum this is a type of std okay. so now we will talk about the salmonella and chigla mostly the characteristics and the mostly symptoms can be can mimic each other so we need to differentiate it these are both gram negative non lactose fermenter oxidase negative both invades git via m cells of the peers patches okay salmonella causes typhoid fever and colonizes the gall bladder okay jo <coughs> just uh, uh, remember the uh, norm uh, characteristics general characteristics from here and you need you need to just differentiate between the salmonella and shigella uh, like uh, salmonella is gram negative or uh, shigella is also gram negative now salmonella is h2 as positive but shigella is h2 as negative okay uh, salmonella is motile but shigella is non motile this uh, spreads by a blood but this spreads from cell to cell okay it uh, goes from one intestinal cells to other intestinal cells and this also produces h2s hus sorry hemolytic uremic syndrome okay now salmonella diagnosis is by vidal's test stool culture you can also do blood cultures during culture during first week we have to do this blood culture then after first week we can also do this stool culture or urine culture in vidal's test we need to see the titer titer should should increase okay now shigella it is gram negative h2 is negative non motile in bloody diarrhea it also causes bloody diarrhea this spreads from one cell to another and it uh, produces the uh, toxin which is called shigella toxin that is also a type of uh, toxin that affect affects the endothelium and will lead to hus Same as that of uh, uh, E. coli, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Okay, so these are the uh, important IMP bacteria, okay, which is required for the exams. i have listed all the imp bacteria with uh, their imp points so that you can differentiate between different uh, bacteria and what are the disease which is caused by the bacteria so it will be easy for you to uh, solve those case scenario questions uh, and also one liners 
and uh, mostly uh, microbiology is interlinked with uh, uh, medicine okay so study in that manner okay so i would try to uh, do it uh, here i have correlated both medicine okay in some i, I have told you the symptoms how you will treat how you will diagnose where it is important i have given it so yeah that's all for this video